Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, July 27. Uh, hope, hope you're doing well. Uh, do hope you're staying cool. Um, pretty hot this week, so do what you need to do to, to stay cool and beat the heat. Um, we're looking at uh, Psalm 58 today, and as I, I mentioned, I've mentioned a few times um, these past few weeks, we're, we're in the midst of a series of psalms that uh, that that are written or prayed from a place of angst, uh, a place of, of consternation, a place where um, where it's where where the outcome of a certain situation is uh, uncertain, and so there is a desperation in these prayers. There's also an anger uh, in these prayers. Um, this one that we're going to read today uh, has the topic of vengeance as part of it, and that's a tricky. Um, it's a tricky subject uh, for us because we read the whole Bible and we see that um, uh, that 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 this desire for vengeance gets turned on its head in a way um, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and and we as people of uh, people of Jesus um, have to uh, have to hold this internal desire for revenge with uh, how God calls for us to handle our anger and, and such things. And so um, we keep that in the back of our heads as we read this psalm uh, and we try to hold them together. But let's let's take a moment to settle our hearts and then um, and then I'll read this Psalm 58 for us today. Psalm 58. Do you rulers indeed speak justly? Do you judge people with equity? No. In your heart you devise injustice. In your hands mete out violence on the earth. Even the birth, even from birth the wicked go astray. From the womb they are wayward, spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows fall short. May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along, like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether they be green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged, when they dip their feet in the blood of the wicked. Then people will say, surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. Um, this is, again, a, a, a psalm that uh, that reflects the reality of, of human emotion, the desire for revenge, the desire for justice. Um, I, I, I think it's, a, you know, I think it's a worthwhile thing to see that ultimately the psalmist turns towards God in in his anger. Um, there is this sense that, or there's this acknowledgement that complete justice requires the. Uh, the judgment of God alone. Uh, God alone can judge perfectly. Uh, we, in our judgments, always um, err towards the side of vengeance, and so justice is usually overdone, and so uh, and, and so we over overdo, or we overcompensate, or we 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 act in um, anger instead of in righteousness, and. And, and there is good news in this, and the good news is that justice happens. The judgment is a part of the world, and we look around and we see so many, uh, so many get away with so much. Uh, the 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 idea that the wicked prosper is not a foreign concept to us. We see that reality in our lives, uh, whether it's locally in our own neighborhoods. Um, or whether it's on a national scale or, or even a global scale, um, we we see wicked people thriving, and we um, 
we don't it's it's hard for us to imagine a way for that to play out in terms of uh, of fairness uh, in terms of justice uh, and and the reality is that only through God can it happen but through God it will happen and that's the promise of the gospel and that's the promise of God's salvation and redemption plan for the world that in order for things to be put right uh, judgment has to occur. Uh, some sort of justice has to come about. Some sort of equalizing, uh, leveling has to occur in order for um, the end, the telos, the perfection of God's salvation to come about. And so that's the hope in which we rest when we're faced with these difficult uh, scenarios and situations. And I think that's what the psalmist in this particular psalm is pointing to. Um, I want to invite you to join me as we go to God in prayer with the prayers of our hearts and minds today. Please join me. Uh, loving God, we, we give you thanks that you are a good God who judges in justice and fairness and righteousness. That you're a God that uh, desires to bring out wholeness and peace and shalom salvation that we see phrases like the wolf lying down with the lamb and the little child leading them and uh, fields uh, fields being sown by by all people owners people on the margins owning their own their own plot of land uh, and not being subject to a landlord or those types of things Lord, we see that and we sort of shake our heads because it just feels so distant from what we know in this world Lord, renew our hope uh, for, for your salvation. Renew our hope for your peace, that your righteousness will, will reign, will come about, and that it's happening, that you're working towards that even now, and there are glimmers of this and hints of it. And we can see that and celebrate and rejoice. Lord, give us that encouragement, that joy, and that hope. Friends, I want to invite you to lift up your prayers, uh, whatever's on your heart today. Lord, would you hear, hear these prayers of your people this morning? So God, today be with us as we go into the world. Help us to see your work and join in it. We thank you for this time together and for your word that speaks to us. Thank you for your joy, your love, and your grace. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, have a great day, friends. Good to be with you this morning. Uh, God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Take care.